Making moonshine is an Appalachian tradition, going all the way back to our Ulster ancestors in Northern Ireland, where they still make their own, which they call Poutine. Today we tell you of a woman from Harlan who was well known for running shine in eastern Kentucky in the last century. Hello folks, I'm Steve Gilley, along with Rod Mullins, and this is Stories, A History of Appalachia. Now if you would, please go down below and click that subscribe button. Ding that bell too, so you get notification of every new story that we put out, and we'd appreciate it if you give us a thumbs up. Well, Steve, when we talk about moonshiners and bootleggers, there's always a funny story that goes along with stories like this. And this one is of no exception. I mean, we've talked about uh, one in particular down from, oh, Hancock County, Tennessee, and down there in the, the rough mountains of Newman Ridge. But this is one that's set in eastern Kentucky. It is indeed. And as you said, we've told of moonshine and moonshiners in this podcast from Mahalia Mullins, the lady you were talking about, the Melungeon moonshiner, who had her own quote-unquote whiskey dispenser in the woods, to Popcorn Sutton, who became famous as an Appalachian distiller. We add to that list today with the story of Maggie Bailey, famous in eastern Kentucky for not only her moonshine, but also her generosity to those in need. Now, Maggie was born on August 12, 1904, on a farm in Letcher County, Kentucky. She attended school at a one-room schoolhouse, completing seven years of her education. And in 1920, she left home to work in a Harlan boarding house as a waitress, serving food and drink to the residents there. In 1921, she made the acquaintance of a man named John Goforth, a gambler, 20 years her senior, who had apparently made quite a bit of money from his gambling and uh, <clears throat> other activities. We won't go into that. Over the next 10 years, it said, Goforth gave Maggie between $25,000 and $30,000 in cash, and that value is in $1921. You can imagine how much that'd be today. That's a lot of money today is what it is, Steve. But, you know, during this time, unlike what's going on today, coal was having a boom back in those days with coal camps popping up everywhere in the Kentucky, Virginia area. Men were just streaming into the area to take jobs at the mines, and they worked very hard. And after they were off work, they liked to relax. They always wanted to get a drink or two and eh, sometimes more. The trouble is, though, prohibition was in full swing in the country at that time, and liquor was illegal everywhere in the country. But Maggie saw a demand, and she decided to supply that and hopefully make a little money along the way herself. Ms. Bailey rented a house in the Clovertown area just outside the Harlan City limits and began to produce what they called white whiskey or what we'd know as white lightning. Soon she was providing her shine to all the small bootleggers in town, establishing herself a monopoly there. And within 10 years, Maggie had doubled her initial investment. In 1930, she married, but that marriage only lasted eight years. During that time, Prohibition ended and legal liquor, called red whiskey from the time spent aging in barrels, came to Harlan. Maggie got a liquor license and began to sell the legal stuff, but she soon ran into a problem. You see, while the red stuff was okay, what folks really wanted was that white lightning. So Maggie continued to sell the illegal shine alongside the legal liquor in her store for the next two years until... 1941. Well, you know, the police had to get wind of this, and they did. And they went to see Miss Bailey, and she was selling moonshine from her store. So, you know, the feds raided the store and found 150 gallons of shine there. Maggie was arrested, and then she was tried on a charge of possession for resale of untaxed liquor. She was sentenced to two years in the federal prison at Alderson, West Virginia. But before she left for prison, here's the funny story. Maggie dropped off an old suitcase at her sister's house in Louisville, Kentucky, for safekeeping. That suitcase, it turned out, contained something that kind of surprised her sister, and a lot of people probably. It contained cash, cold, hard cash, $80,000 worth of cash, Steve. Oh, my goodness. Well, by 1945, Maggie was out of jail and back in Harlan and selling that red whiskey in Clovertown. 
She maintained, and her lawyers agreed, that she never sold moonshine after that. Half pints of that red whiskey went for two bucks and cans of beer for 40 cents. And over the following decades, Maggie lived a frugal life, counting her pennies, raising a garden, selling her red whiskey, and supposedly living on $100 to $1,200 a year. Problem was, by this time, Harlan County was a dry county, and the sale of alcohol was strictly forbidden. 37 times, starting in 1953, Kentucky State Police investigated and charged Maggie Bailey with possession of alcoholic beverages. And 37 times she'd be tried. And 37 times the jury would find her not guilty and let her go. You see, Maggie Bailey was always quick to help a body out when they were in need with some money to make it to the next payday or help with an unexpected repair or some other bill. So folks were not keen on sending this kind neighbor to prison. And on it went until that fateful day of February 18th, 1965. Well, on that day, at around 4 o'clock in the afternoon, nine Kentucky state troopers conducted a thorough search of Maggie's little house in yet another investigation. And as always, they found what they were looking for. 14 half pints of whiskey, one pint of vodka, six pints of gin, and 116 bottles of beer. But that's not all they found on that day. Inside a small bedroom closet, the troopers found a footlocker. Inside the footlocker were four brown grocery bags, you know, the kind that the cashier asks or used to ask at one time or another, would you rather have that instead of plastic? That's another story for another day. But anyway, also found was an overnight case in an old sock. Hmm, woolite. Oh, okay. But it's not the bags or the case or the sock that's important. It was what was contained in those items that got the attention of the cops. Each was crammed full of cash, mint, government cash was what it was. Specifically, Rod, $206,909 worth of cold hard cash, although Maggie and her lawyers disputed that figure, saying it was much too high and couldn't have been more than $116,300. Strange (laughs) how specific they were on that. Anyway... She said that was money she had saved over the years by being frugal. And because she didn't trust banks since she'd lost all that money Mr. Goforth had given her when the banks failed at the start of the Great Depression. Well, the IRS sued her for $429,528 in back taxes, including $214,764 in penalties and $21,758 in interest. But Maggie, being a well, Appalachian woman, she fought back and she fought back hard. Her team of lawyers managed to get that amount down to, get this, Rod, $18,000 in late taxes and late filing penalties by 1970. How about that? No, those were good lawyers. I'm telling you, to get <laughs> a total down from about oh, $429,528 to $18,000, they did a pretty darn good job on that. But, you know, Maggie continued her business all the way up to her death at the age of 101 years old on December 3rd, 2005. Now, Maggie Bailey was said to have never, ever taken a drink of a drop of alcohol, nor did she sell to children or alcoholics or drunkards, as she called them. That is an amazing story. And I've got to ask you this, because you are a fan of the same program I am, uh, Justified. Yes. You remember Mags Bennett. Yes. She was the, I guess, the bootleg queen and the drug queen and all that mm-hmm. stuff, the big, big boss there in Harlem right. in, in Justified. Mm-hmm. Mags sounds awfully much like Maggie, don't you think? Yeah, I think so, too. I think uh, as, as it kind of went on the way that, I kind of look back on the series to a certain degree. Well, look at this. We've got a Maggie Bailey. We've got a Mags Bennett is what we've got. So the similarities are kind of there with the name. But, you know, Mags Bennett would help out people in certain times of need if they needed it. But they always knew where to come back for liquor or, you know, the moonshine or different things like that until things kind of got tied. And then she started going into the 
marijuana business and the drug business and so forth. But, you know, it's not a bad idea or suggestion that Elmore Leonard could have possibly modeled Megs Bennett after Maggie Bailey to some degree or another, kind of leaving out some some parts, of course, for television. You know how that goes. But still, uh, it's, it's a good possibility. She could have been the one that, uh, you know, Megs Bennett was possibly modeled after. Who knows? We will never be able to ask Elmore Leonard about that since he's passed on. But it, it's a great account of association right there, what you come up with. Yes, that's true. And folks, that's the story of Maggie Bailey. Another bit of the history of this place we call home, Appalachia. Thanks for listening. You can subscribe to the Stories Podcast, the audio version, on your favorite podcast app. And again, go down below and click that subscribe button to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Until next we meet, y'all take care. So long, everybody. So long. So long.